Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father McSweeney, and this Mass is being offered for all of our parishioners and benefactors and Mildred Gutierrez. We are hosting a blood drive today until 2.30 p.m. in the Annex. Please consider donating blood. You never know when you or a family member might need a transfusion. Please rise and join in the processional hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, number 462. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Brethren, to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, we must first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God bless you as you minister the body of Christ to our brothers and sisters who cannot be present here with us. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we, who are bowed down by our consciences, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, 
and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. At the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked me, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern from, and drank from it himself? with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you people say that the place of, to, to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who was speaking with you. Many of Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Jesus. Praise be Jesus Christ, now, now and forever. As a child of the 1960s, we had required reading in grade school. One of the books we were required to read, as many of my generation were, was The Story of My Life by Helen Keller. She was still alive at the time and was known throughout the world. I don't know if the current generations know of Helen Keller, but she was kind of famous in my day. 
Around that time was also the film The Miracle Worker, about her life. Won Academy Awards for the Best Actress, and Bancroft and the Best Supporting Actress, Patty Duke. Patty Duke played Helen Keller as a child. One of the great scenes in The Miracle Worker, as it tries to explain how Helen Keller, who was normal, normal until she was about 19 months old and then scarlet fever made her deaf and blind and also mute. And Annie Sullivan was her tutor, her instructor, her companion who tried to teach her out of that darkness of blindness and deafness. Annie Sullivan herself was going blind and she knew how to sign words and was trying over and over again to teach Helen Keller about the world around her by signing the words that meant the things around her, but Helen was not getting it. The great scene in the movie and the great scene in Helen Keller's life was when it all finally clicked. She was a rambunctious child. She intentionally spilled a pitcher of water at the dining room table and Annie Sullivan was fed up, had, would have nothing more of it, so she grabbed Helen, grabbed the empty pitcher, and brought Helen out to the pump to get water. We're kind of spoiled. We can turn faucets on in our rooms if we need water, but that's not how it always was. So they went out to the pump. Annie Sullivan pumped the water, forced and, uh, Helen Keller's hand under the water with the bucket, and then signed in her other hand, water, W-A-T-E-R, water, W-A-T-E-R. And finally, Helen realized that the stuff she was feeling was the thing that Annie Sullivan was signing her, and she remembered as an infant being able to say, Wawa, she knows what the word was, she knows what this was, and everything began to make sense for her, and she ran around asking, Annie Sullivan to sign all the things around her. This is a tree, T-R-E-E. -E. It was an amazing sign, but it, Helen Keller said in her autobiography, the world finally made sense. She could now learn because she knew what Annie was trying to teach her signified something. And from there she went on and became a great, not a great orator, but she was able to give speeches and she was an author and she was a humanitarian and she won the Medal of Freedom. One of the presidents, Johnson, I think, gave her the Medal of Freedom. But it's important for us to realize how certain things can change our lives so that now we understand. And that was her moment of epiphany, her moment of understanding. For the woman of the well, the, the Samaritan woman at the well in today's gospel, it was the meeting of the Messiah that changed her life. And he does so by explaining to her how she thirsts for water. She has to come to the well to get water probably daily. And that thirst that people experience that we don't anymore, we really don't know what it's like to not have water or to have to go travel a mile just to get a cup of water. We don't understand that thirst, but Christ understood that physical thirst and explained to her that our souls thirst for a relationship with our Creator and He can fulfill that thirst. Mother Teresa also reminds us that God thirsts for us. He wants us with that great anticipation that a thirsty person wants to be quenched with some water. And that as this interaction between the woman at the well and Christ unfolds, she understands, she sees that he has more to offer than just physical water. He knows her more intimately than she knows herself. And the soul seeks that relationship, wants to relax in the in the hands of the one who created us. And, and from that, Christ is able to go and preach the kingdom to the Samaritans, those who were not the first called, but those who would receive the message 
as a thirsty person receives water. My father was, a, was in the Navy during the Second World War in the Pacific, the Battle of Saipan, the Battle of Okinawa. We, we, we know what thirst is. The, the Marines on some of those islands came and told you what it was like not to have fresh water for two or three days. It became painful not having water. That's what it means to thirst, to really want something and not to be able to get it. And that's sometimes what our soul does for us. It's, it tells us we, we need a relationship with God. We, we need that in our lives. We need to exit this darkness that sometimes surrounds us and find the light because our existence depends upon it. They say you can't go three days without water. You will perish. Many go around without seeking the Lord at all, not knowing that that thirst within them is for a relationship with our God. And then again, the other side of that coin is to realize that God so loved the world. He thirsts for our souls. He wants us to be one with him so much so that he died for our sake. He suffered for us so that we could have eternal life. And as we recognize his unfolding of this message and mission to this stranger at the well, to this woman who was not even of the tribe of Israel, but who is accepting of the truth, who understands that this is something that she wants. And once she receives it, she goes back and tells everyone else, I have found the one who makes meaning to my life. And so it should be for all of us. We should seek Christ as if our entire identity depended upon it. Our, our, our whole being needs to be nourished and fed by our God. We need to understand all of the mysteries that he came to, into this world to show us that lead to the path of eternal life. And that as we journey through this great season of Lent and try to discipline ourselves so that we can be open to the Word of God, we can be open to be nourished and fed by Him, to allow Him to be the spring of life that leads to eternal life. We need to recognize that it takes an act of the will. We have to choose Him. We have to go to Him. We have to allow Him to become one with us so that we can truly partake of the stream of living water that is promised to us. And that as we try to discipline ourselves to be better followers of Christ, better Christians in this world, better examples of what he taught us we should be, we are strengthened by the understanding that the more we practice being good Christians, the easier it becomes to be a good Christian. The more we do the things that God tells us we must do, the easier it becomes to do them. It's the, the strengthening of virtue in our lives. But we first have to understand, as Helen Keller first had to understand, and once she understood, she wanted everything. And once we have Christ, we should want to share him with everyone because he brings us true peace. He brings us true contentment. He allows us to know who we truly are and what our responsibility is in this world, and that that gives us the courage we need to go forth and to proclaim his gospel in season and out of season when it's popular and when it's unpopular. And now let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Seeking after the living water that only Jesus can give, we now offer our prayers to the Father. For Pope Francis and all bishops, that they may grow in holiness and lead the faithful according to the heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the needy, and for the forgotten of our society, that they may receive the support and care that they are in need of, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may persevere in our Lenten penances of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, the religious life, and the diaconate, especially from our own parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, especially Bob, Bob Brownbeck, Tom Johnson, John DiChiara, Joanna Siricella, Anna Milio, Chris Slattery, Manuel Aristi, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's consolation and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Carmela Santucci, Mary Lou Burns, Rita Muller, and especially for all of our parishioners and our benefactors, and for Mil Mildred, who chair, whom this holy mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our parish book of petitions, and all those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we beg you to hear and answer our prayers. For we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in the offertory hymn, O Beauty Ever Ancient, number 517.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise of the Lord of his name for our good and good of the Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Sancto. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our mer merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, be safe and
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that our parish is having a blood drive in the annex of the parish hall for all those who are able to give. I hear there's a great need for blood in New York. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God and His Blessed Mother. St. Michael, the Archangel, the Please join in the recessional hymn, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, number 137.